What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. What is a contraindication of giving too much fluid? Well, there's a potential for fluid volume overload and that's what we'll be discussing today. So what is fluid overload? So fluid overload occurs when there's too much fluid in the body either inside or outside of the vessels. Fluid intake or retention exceeds the fluid needed for the body. So this can be caused by either excessive intake or faulty processes. So when it comes to excessive intake, we could be drinking too much fluid. There also could be an excessive intravenous fluid administration, as well as excessive intake of salt. Fluid follows sodium, like we talked about before. Fluid follows salt, causing cells to shrink due to the water being pulled out of the cells. As for our faulty processes, Kidney failure, we're unable to excrete all of that excess fluid. Congestive heart failure, we can't get that fluid pumped around quick enough. And liver failure obviously is another big key contraindication when it comes to fluid overload. So there's three key types of fluid overload. The first being isotonic overhydration. We also have hypertonic overhydration and hypotonic overhydration. So we're gonna begin by looking at isotonic overhydration. So it results in an excess fluid in the extracellular fluid compartments. Only the extracellular fluid compartment is expanded and fluid does not shift between the extracellular and intracellular compartments. Isotonic overhydration causes circulatory overload and interstitial edema. When severe or when it occurs with poor cardiac function, heart failure and pulmonary edema can occur. The causes for isotonic overhydration include inadequately controlled intravenous therapy, kidney disease, as well as long-term corticosteroid therapy. So let's talk about hypertonic overhydration. And with this, it's really pretty rare. You're not gonna see it a whole lot, but it's usually caused by an excessive sodium intake. And what happens is this fluid is drawn from the intracellular fluid compartment and the extracellular fluid compartment expands and the intracellular fluid volume contracts. Like we know with hypertonic, we've got fluid that's moving out of the cells into the extracellular compartments and it makes our cells shrivel and shrink and it expands our extracellular space. So causes of this, again, excessive sodium ingestion is very huge with this um, hypertonic overhydration. We've also got rapid infusions of those hypertonic salines. We talked about that in our hypertonic solutions um, uh, previous video. I highly recommend that you check it out because we'll go through specifically what that means, as well as excessive sodium bicarbonate therapy is another big thing when it comes to hypertonic overhydration. And lastly, we have hypotonic overhydration, also known as water intoxication. So you have those patients that drink those massive amount of water constantly, constantly, and they become water intoxicated. This is hypotonic overhydration. The excessive fluid moves into that intracellular space and all the body fluid compartments expand. You also have electrolyte imbalances that can occur as a result of all of that dilution within our bloodstream. So causes of this early kidney disease can be a cause of hypotonic overhydration. You can have um, heart failure, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion, also known as SIADH. Um, inadequately controlled intravenous therapy again, replacement of isotonic fluid loss with hypotonic fluids, you definitely don't want to do that, as well as irrigation of wounds and body cavities with hypotonic fluids. So when we have all of this massive fluid intake, our body begins failing us, and how does it do that? Well, we start to have kidney failure. We cannot filter the blood and release urine, leading to less or no urine output. Fluid will continue to collect within the body because the kidneys cannot excrete it. We have congestive heart failure. It's our stretched heart chambers make it very difficult to pump out blood throughout the body. And this causes blood to back up into our vessels, increasing hydrostatic pressure and pushing blood out of the vessels into interstitial spaces. You've got all that pressure. Eventually your cells, your vessels are just gonna give out and they're going to start to leak 
all of those um, blood products into those interstitial spaces. And lastly, we have liver failure. Increased pressure in the liver causes an increase in hydrostatic pressure and pushing blood out of the vessel into the interstitial space. Low albumin levels can also occur. That's when um, we, need, we need to have albumin because it helps keep fluids from leaking out of our vessels. Like albumin is a protein, so water follows protein, water follows salt. So as long as we have that albumin, it's going to maintain where it needs to be. So what are some complications when it comes to fluid overload? Well, high blood pressure is a big one. Fluid builds up in the vessels, causing an increase in our blood pressure. Um, increased hydrostatic pressure is also another one. Um, that increased hydrostatic pressure on the vessel walls causes fluid to leak out of the vessels. Um, fluid buildup around our organs. Fluid leaking builds up in the interstitial spaces around our organs. Um, fluid in our lungs. Fluid builds up everywhere, even in our lungs. So if we've got fluid building up through our body, just like in sepsis, we're gonna eventually have fluid build up in our lungs. And again, fluid leaks out of the vessel walls into those alveolar spaces, making it harder for oxygen to diffuse. And lastly, hyponatremia. We're gonna have a dilution of our serum sodium. Too much fluid inside the blood vessels dilutes sodium, causing hyponatremia. So when you get a patient that has fluid overload, you're gonna see many different things. For the cardiovascular, they're gonna have bounding or an increased pulse rate. They're trying to move that fluid along. Elevated blood pressure, like we talked about, hypertension because of the fluid buildup in the vessels that will increase our blood pressure. Distended neck veins and hand veins. You're gonna see you're extremely fluid overloaded. Everything is backing up. All of your veins are gonna get distended. Um, elevated central venous pressure as well as dysrhythmias because if we have a dilution of our electrolytes, you're going to see some dysrhythmias because of that. Respiratory, we're going to have an increased respiratory rate that's usually shallow because we're trying to move that fluid as much as we can or breathe it off. Remember we talked about insensible losses. Hopefully we can breathe off some of it. Um, dyspnea, you're going to have difficulty breathing as soon as that fluid starts building up in your lungs and you're going to have those moist crackles upon auscultation. Neuromuscular, you're going to have altered level um, of consciousness, headaches, visual disturbances, skeletal muscle weakness, as well as parathesias. When it comes to our renal, we're going to have an increased urinary output if the kidneys aren't able to compensate. Um, if the kidneys cannot compensate, then you're going to start to see a decrease in urinary output. Um, integumentary system, we're going to have pitting edema in a lot of our dependent areas, as well as that pale, cool skin. Gastrointestinal, we're going to have an increased motility of our GI tract, much more diarrhea than we normally would have with any other disease processes if we're fluid overloaded. Um, increased body weight because that fluid literally has no place to go. Um, liver enlargement, again, fluid is leaking out of the vessels into the interstitial spaces, causing liver enlargement as well as ascites. And lastly, when it comes to our laboratory findings, as you know, too much water in our blood vessels are going to cause dilution. So you're going to have a decrease in serum osmolality, a decrease in your hematocrit, BUN level, serum sodium levels, as well as a decrease in urine specific gravity. So what are we going to do for this patient? What are some things that we're going to look at? Well, we're going to look at our pro BNP because it detects heart stress stretching and damage. So we want to make sure that we can diagnose heart failure if that is a cause of our fluid overload. Albumin levels and liver studies to help diagnose liver failure as a cause as well. Um, serum sodium, we want to see how dilute that sodium is in our blood vessels. BUN and creatinine helps us to determine if the kidneys are taking damage and we can also diagnose kidney failure. Remember, if your BUN and your creatinine are high, then it's more likely something going on with your renals, it's failing. If it's just your BUN being high, then you're most likely dehydrated. And lastly, chest x-ray, you're gonna see congestion or infusions in the lung because of all of that fluid buildup. So how are we gonna manage this patient over your next 12 hours? So we're gonna monitor intake and output. It's important to document all intake and output to determine the efficiency of treatment. So as we're continuously giving medications to try to help with this fluid overload, we wanna make sure that our treatment is efficient. 
We're also going to do daily weights because we need to determine if the treatment is efficient and if we're able to get rid of that fluid. It also helps us indicate if fluid is being retained. We don't want to retain fluid, we want to get rid of it, so we always check our daily weights. Fluid restrictions is a big one. You don't want to continuously give them fluids if they're already fluid overloaded because it's only going to make it worse. Diuretics is a big one. You want to make sure that you're watching your electrolytes. So diuretics, the big things that happen with them is it helps remove fluids from the body. Osmotic diuresis may be prescribed initially to help prevent that severe electrolyte imbalance. But if we're giving things such as Lasix and we have a low potassium, say of two because it's highly diluted, then we don't want to continuously keep giving Lasix because what is Lasix? It's a loop diuretic and loop diuretics cause potassium to be excreted. So we want to look at maybe using like a potassium sparing medication such as spirolactone. So those are things you have to take into consideration when you're providing care for your patient. And then lastly, with dialysis, it may be necessary, depending on the state of the kidney failure, to help remove that excess fluid if the kidneys just can't keep up. So how are we going to educate our fluid overloaded patients? Well, we want to make sure that they understand fluid restrictions. We don't want to continuously make fluid overload worse, so they will have to restrict their fluids. Sodium restricted is also another one, because remember, water follows salt. So we want to make sure that they're not taking a whole bunch of sodium if their body is unable to excrete all of that extra fluid. They need to take medications as prescribed. Patients who stop taking their diuretics because they pee too much is a big one. I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody coming in looking like the Michelin man and they stopped taking their diuretics because they said it made them pee too much. Well, that is the point of the medication. It makes you pee so that you don't have all that fluid overload. Um, monitoring daily weights when they're at home. If they start to see these excessive fluid shifts, they need to see their doctors immediately. And education is really also based on the cause of the fluid overload. So if we have a patient that has congestive heart failure, restricting fluid and monitoring weight is high priority when it comes to care at home. Um, hypernatremia, again, if they've got all of this excessive salt, we wanna make sure that they're restricting their sodium intake to make sure that their fluid overload doesn't get worse. So what are the goals with our patients? So we want to restore fluid balance. We want to correct electrolyte imbalances as well, because again, remember, it's going to dilute a lot of our serum electrolytes. And we also want to eliminate or control whatever the underlying cause is for the fluid overload. I hope that this video was helpful for you in passing your nursing exams like a boss. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure that you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as here on YouTube. Make sure that you subscribe as well as like this video. I also have a website at www.nursechung.com where I will have NCLEX style questions as well as additional resources with each of my videos. So make sure that you check that out. But until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I will speak with you all again soon. Bye.